Hello, my dear student. Welcome to another edition of your mathematics lesson today in continuation with our main topic, the precisions. We are going to take another aspect of it, that is learning how to find the derivative of some special functions, that is the techniques of the precision. And the very first technique we're going to learn today is the product rule. So let's begin. So after completing the very lesson today, my dear students will be able to find the derivative of the function which can be expressed as product of two other functions. So if you have a function that can be expressed as two other functions, finding it is derivative is what you learn in this very lesson today. So as usual in your paper writer segment of the lesson today, I will introduce to what happens to some sequence that leads to golden ratio. I will explain what type of functions that leads to golden ratio after completing my lesson today. So don't go away. To begin the lesson, let us first consider these special functions. You have uh, number one, y equals to 3x squared cos 4x. And number two, you have a function y equals to 3x squared e raised to 2x. These are some special functions. You can see here if this were plus in between this 3x squared and cos 4x, then that one would not be simple. Similarly, if this second function were 3x squared plus e raised to 2x, then it will now be simple case. But these are some special functions in which uh, using the ordinary techniques that we have just learned, finding derivative may not work. So in this case, we have to employ some special techniques in order to find the derivative of these functions. If I go back to these very two functions, you can see that uh, 3x squared is multiplying cos 4x, and each of these two you can take it as a function of x. Similarly, in the second function, 3x squared is multiplying e raised to 2x, and you can take this as a separate function of x, that is 3x squared, and you can also take e raised to 2x as another separate function of x, and it is a multiplication in between. So this type of functions, we have to find another means of finding it is derivative. And it is this product rule that we are going to learn today is what we are going to use to find the derivative of these kinds of functions. So the rule of using this product rule is says, uh, if you have a function y, for example, which can be as a product of two other functions, that is f of x times g of x. Just like in this case, you can take this 3x squared as your f of x, that is one function of x, and the cos 4x as g of x, another function of x. So if you have a function like this, where the two, where the function can be product of two other functions, then what you now do, you now let one of the function to be u, and the other one to be v. That is f of x, you let it to be f, it to be u, and the g of x related to be your v. In that case, you can now rewrite this original function y as uh, y equals to u v, that is u times v. In that case, if you have this type of functions, then the rule for finding it is derivative says uh, dy by dx of this very function is the center as v multiplied by du dx plus u times the dv dx. This is the rule that we are going to employ in order to find the derivative of this type of functions, where u and b are both the functions of x, just like we have seen. We are going to take examples how we can make use of this very rule and find the derivative of these kinds of functions using this product rule. So example number one is says, uh, find the derivative of y with respect to x if you have the function y equals to x squared side x. Solution to this very problem, what we do first is to copy down the given function, that is y equals to side x squared, that is x squared side x, x squared side x, this is the given function. So what I'm going to do, look at this function is now x squared multiplying sine x and both this x squared and sine x can be a function of x. So it means I have to employ this product rule there. So there what I'm going to do, I will now write my product rule. It says dy by dx is equals to v multiplied by du dx then plus u 
times the dvdx this is the product row then what i'm going to do i'll have to later one of this function either x squared to be your u then sign x to be your v or take sign take x squared to be your v and sign x to be your u whichever the case may be is still the same so let me just let my u to be equals to this x square look at it then my v is now going to be sin x then i have to use the this to find the du dx and also find the dv dx let me just move my v is now going to be sin x so what i'm going to do next is to find the du dx that is derivative of the function u with respect to x and find the dv dx the derivative of the function v with respect to x so let me go ahead and do that so derivative of u with respect to x that is du dx this is the function u it is says x square so derivative of x square is nothing but two times uh, one here i have two then that power two reduced by one so this is nothing but two x then derivative of side x that is dv dx dv dx is what i'm going to get next Derivative of side x is nothing but cos x, so I'm going to have cos x here. So I can now go back to this, my product rule, the formula there, I now have everything ready. I'm just going to substitute my v is side x, my du dx is now 2x, and my u is x square, my dv dx is cos x, so I'm just substituting over here. There I'm going to have... Uh, I'm going to have instead v, I now have uh, sin x times uh, du dx, and du dx is 2x, look at it here, then plus my u, which is now x squared, times uh, dv dx, which is cos x, so I'm going to have uh, x squared times cos x, so I continue, I'll now do this multiplication, so sin x times 2x is nothing but 2x sin x, and x squared times cos x is nothing but x squared cos x. This would now be the derivative of this very function. So let me move, take another example. Example number two, it says find the derivative with respect to x if uh, you have the function y equals to open bracket to x raised to 3 plus 3. Close the bracket, then times another bracket inside it, you have uh, x raised to 4 minus 2x. Solution to this very problem. Copying the original function given that is y equals to 2x cubed plus 3 into 2x raised to 4 minus 2x. There you now write your product rule. The product rule, remember, says dy by dx is equals to v multiplied by du dx plus v plus u. I beg your pardon multiplied by dv dx so what remains is to now make your u or let your u to be one of this bracket and then v to be the other bracket because look at this function is these two brackets multiplied together and each of the bracket can be a function of x so i'll now let my u to be the very first bracket that is 2x raised to 3 plus 3 the second bracket is now going to be your v, which is x raised to 4 minus 2x. So what I'm going to do next is to get uh, derivative of the function u with respect to x, that is du dx, because I needed it here, and find the derivative of v with respect to x, that is dv dx. So let me just move ahead. Finding derivative of u with respect to x, that is du dx. This is my function u. So derivative of this 2x raised to 3, the power 3 will now multiply this 2 to make it a 6. And that power 3 will now reduce it by 1, so it will now become 2. And the derivative of this constant number 3, because I have 2 times there, derivative of this constant number is 0. So derivative of u with respect to x, that is now going to be 6x squared. So I will now move finding derivative of v with respect to x. That is dv dx. This is the function v. So I'm finding derivative of x raised to 4, which gives me 4x raised to 3. 
derivative of 2x is nothing but this 2. So I'm going to have uh, 4x raised to 3 minus 2. This is your dv dx. So you now go to this your rule, this formula, and substitute. You have v, you have u, you have du dx, and you have dv dx. So you just substitute and simplify. So there I continue. My v is this x raised to 4 minus 2x. So I'm going to have uh, x raised to 4 minus 2x in bracket times du dx. And du dx, look at it here, is the 6x squared. So times 6x squared, then plus this plus sign. I will now substitute my u. My u is this function 2x raised to 3 plus 3. So I'm going to multiply that function by dv dx, and dv dx is 4x raised to 3 minus 2. So I'm going to have two brackets multiplied together. This bracket is the function u, while the second bracket is dv dx. So I continue. So I'll now multiply this very first bracket by 6x squared to get uh, 6x squared into x raised to 4 minus 2x. Uh, then I'll copy these two brackets also. Together, I'm going to have 2x raised to 3 plus 3 times uh, another bracket for x raised to 3 minus 2. So what I'm going to do next is to expand these brackets. So 6x squared multiplied by x raised to 4 and 6x squared multiplied by minus 2x. That gives me 6x raised to 6. You can see this x raised to 2 times x raised to 4. Low of indices, you see, add the powers. Then 6x squared times minus 2x, that gives me minus 12x raised to 3. Then I will also expand these two brackets. Each of this uh, term here inside the first bracket times everything in the second bracket. If you do that correctly, you now have uh, 8x raised to 6 plus 8x raised to 3, then minus 6. This is what you are going to have. Next, you now collect like terms. There are terms that are like, look at 6x raised to 6 and 8x raised to 6, the one that have same power. Similarly, you have power 3, you have power 3 here, so they are like, you can collect them. So I have a 6 plus 8 there, that gives me 14x raised to 6, minus 12 plus 8 it gives you minus 4, then x raised to 3. Then you just copied this minus 6. This is now the derivative of this function y with respect to 2x. With these few examples, I hope you'll be able to find the derivative of a function that can be expressed as a product of two other functions using this technique that we call the product rule. Thank you for your attention. Let me just move to the last segment to Mercy Sifan. So let me explain what are the generalized sequence that leads to the golden ratio. Remember here, golden ratio is the value 1.618. So it says uh, every sequence created with the sum of the last two values. If it is last two values, you add it to get the next term. You add also last two values to get the next term like that. Irrespective of the two values that you are starting with, those types of sequence will always, will always eventually will now have terms in the ratio converging to this 1.618, which we call the golden ratio. Let's just have a sample of those sequence. Example, you have the sequence started with 4 and 5. These are the two starting values. It is 4 and 5. You add it to get 9. That is the next term. And you add the last two terms. That is 5 and 9 to get the next term. Look at it, 14. 5 plus 9 will give you 14. So this is a sequence that is created using addition of the last two terms. So look at this ratio of the sequence. If you now take a second number divided by the first, this is what you have, 1.25. If you take 9 divided by 5, you have 1.8. If you take 14 divided by 9, you have 1.556. 23 divided by 14, you have this 1.643. 37 divided by 23, you have 1.609. 60 divided by 37, you have 1.622. 97 divided by 60, you have 1.617. Then 157 divided by 97, you have 1.6. You see now, 
the ratios now becoming are now trying to convert it to this 1.618. We are not seeing the, the very first moment you started dividing, you have 1 point, but as you go on, the numbers will now be converging to this. So if you have taken this 411 divided by 254, you can see that it is 1.618 exactly. If you have some other terms also, if you continue, because it's addition of the last two that gives you the next term, and also divide, you see those the terms, ratios of those terms is now converging to 1.618. Let me just take another sequence. Starting with the different values, starting with the 5 and 7, this is the beginning values, 5 and 7. You add 5 and 7 gives you 12. 12 and 7 gives you 17. 17 and 12 gives you 29. 29 and 17 gives you this 46. This is another sequence starting with any two values, but what happened, the next term is the addition of the last two. And let me just take the ratios of those terms. The ratio of 5 and 7 is 1.4. 7 and 12 is 1.714. 12 and 17 is 1.47. You see, if we continue, you can now see that it's now trying to converge from here 1.617, 1.618. If you write more terms and try to divide those terms, what you have, you see that the numbers are converging to 1.618. As you can see in this last two terms I have here. So any sequence based on this, that start with any two values and the addition of those last two gives you the next term no matter what two values that you are starting with. If we continue, if we continue writing more terms and dividing, you see those the terms now converge, having a ratio converging to 1.618. We see more of this amazing things in mathematics in our next lesson. Thank you for your attention.